All right, continue our conversation with uh, the F Minister of Finance, Malusi Gagaba, about a big day here for South Africa. It's the launch at noon of the African Regional Centre of the New Development Bank. Minister, thanks again for your, your very precious time for being with us. So I, I think it's quite a relevant question. Um, uh, the reality of who can come to the bank for a loan. I mean, if I've got a little SMME and I need funds uh, and no bank will give it to me here in South Africa, can I perhaps come to the NDB or... The no, no go. At the, at the moment, um, and perhaps for the foreseeable future, we're looking at government institutions because they also have the, the balance sheet to be able to carry the volume of loans that can be funded by the NTP and they can take the risks because we, the, the bank will obviously look at the risk profile and, and, and it's, it's countries, it's governments that have the, the, the type of risk profile required by the bank. Remember that the bank is new, that the membership of the bank um, also are, are countries with different types of ratings, uh, grades, and, and therefore the bank's appetite for, for new risks is, is still um, quite... Um, at uh, restraint, you know, they, they would prefer to, yeah. to loan to government. And, uh, and, and, and so I think for the foreseeable future, the governments are the ones that are going to be able to come to the bank. Okay, I suppose that it does make sense. I mean, the World Bank uh, operates in very much so the same manner yes. as well. I mean, just this week, um, the, the, the courts overturned a recommendation by the public protector for a review of the role of the Reserve Bank. How is this bank now structured and, 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 and what is its core mandate? Who are clients? At the present moment, the core clients are the five, five founding members of BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. We, we all are uh, members of the Board of Governors, so the five finance ministers from these five countries are governors of the bank. Then each country appoints a director to sit on the Board of Directors together with the uh, president of the bank and the other members, and, and, and they deal with the day-to-day -day operations of the banks. We, we each have a... a a quota of people who get appointed as, as, as the president, vice presidents and other uh, director general posts in order to run the business of the bank, experts in, in the field of finance and banking and, and HR and, and other areas. And, and, and so the core mandate of the bank at the present moment is to provide, is to become a multilateral international financial institution for BRICS member countries. Mm. As I say, over time, we will open up membership to other countries, not only from Africa and Latin America or Asia, but also even from Europe. If there are countries that are interested in joining the bank from Europe and, and, and elsewhere. But we are to agree, we are yet to agree on the principles upon which such membership, membership will be open to other mm. countries. Because there are dynamics. We formed the bank for particular reasons. We were looking at how do you create a balance, a, a multipolar, multipolarity in the, in the international financial mechanism? And we established the bank in order to provide that counterweight, particularly in favor of developing countries, trying to give them a bigger voice. BRICS members are a significant voice within the G20. We are, and, and the G20 is about, constitutes about 90% of the membership of the, of the IMF and, and the World Bank. And, and so you, you, we are a significant voice in this regard. I think yeah. the establishment of BRICS itself, now the, the launch of the BRICS, of the New Development Bank, otherwise known as the BRICS Bank, provides us that level of uh, 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 leverage not only politically, but also economically in global, in global okay. affairs. And, and so it, it, it is a, a, an important institution. Indeed. But you mentioned the IMF, and this brings me to my next point. I mean, there's a lot of talk out there. I mean, South Africa is in a very difficult financial position right now. We're in a recession. Um, we, we're facing downgrades in every direction you look at. So our financial situation is not good right now. Now, there's word out there that uh, uh, the possibility that IMF, uh, that we as South Africa may be approaching the IMF for funding. Um, does this not sort of contradict what's going on where we have another financial uh, institution like 
like this uh, NDB, and yet we're still approaching the IMF to help and bail us out. Firstly, is this true? Yeah. Are we approaching no. the IMF? No, we're not. Um, what, what I had said at the beginning of July was that we had entered into a technical recession. And looking at the different economic indicators, we were in a very tight situation. Um, and, and I was saying, if we don't change and start implementing the 14 confidence boosting measures, which I, I announced on the 13th of June, and improve our st the structural um, uh, aspect of our economy, implement the structural reforms that we were talking about, and, and boost business confidence, get, get investments going, boost government spending, ensure that our state-owned companies are governed in a way that inspires confidence so that they are able to raise capital from bond auctions. That if we, if we didn't do all of that, we would find ourselves with no green shoots, unable to raise revenue to support our budget, our revenue base would decline. And with the fiscal framework that we had set ourselves, the, the budget ceiling we had set ourselves, we would find ourselves in no option, with no option but to go to the IMF. And I, I, it was actually a warning that we need to start doing things right. And, and I think you have seen that starting to happen at ESCOM, the decision taken by the board recently to put the CFO on special leave arising from the, the audit findings um, and, and the decision by SAA to appoint a very competent, confidence-inspiring CEO. And, and you are beginning to see state-owned companies playing ball. You are beginning to see the different uh, uh, departments also coming into the party, ensuring that uh, they, they do what they need to do to implement structural reforms. We are in constant con conversation with business in order to boost business confidence. And with all of that, I am confident that, look, we have had good rains. We have recorded bumper crop. In actual fact, our, our maize crop has been um, uh, significantly higher than even um, in, in, in some of the years when we, had good, we, we, when we had much better rains. So agriculture has been performing well. We are beginning to see retail prices going up, the performance of the retail sector improving. And, and I think that uh, we, we should be able to turn the corner. It requires all South Africans to, to, hold, to hold hands, to work hard, government to reduce um, inefficient spending, it requires all of us to fight corruption. It requires all of us to ensure that government spending is efficient and goes to targeted areas. We reprioritize our programs and ensure that we can drive uh, growth in the economy. Yeah. Just finally, on a closing note, and if I may ask you to do it quite quickly because we've got a minute to go to the news. We are um, a very small fish in a big sea yes. when you look at BRICS. I mean, Absolutely. we're talking about big economies from Russia to China to India. Um, you know, uh, Brazil and South Africa are not growing. We are in a very bad financial situation. And, I mean, we're not growing as an economy. I mean, you look at another African country like Rwanda, who seem to be doing exceptionally well. But South Africa, we still, even though I know what you've said, but we're yet to see anything coming out of this. Do you think that we perhaps are, are, are playing above our category, our weight category? Should we be playing in this field, even though we're in such a dire financial strait and every, every single cent of ours should be uh, accounted for? Actually, South Africa is, uh, yes, in some ways, punching above its weight. But in, an, in other ways, we, we are among our peers. If, if you look at the countries that are growing faster, they are growing off a very low pace. And, and so if you can compare the growth level of the GDP in Rwanda and, and then the United States, you would be wrong to say that, oh, because Rwanda is growing faster and higher than the United States, therefore the United States has suddenly shrunk and become a smaller economy. No, the South African economy is quite large. We are one of the 20 largest economies in the world. On the African continent, we are the most advanced economy. Um, and, and so we, we are playing in the space in which we should be playing. We, whereas our growth is uh, still constrained, I believe that over the next few years you will see um, our economy picking up. 
we, we, we need to work hard to get ourselves out of the low growth trap so that we, we can start growing at the level we want because critical to what we need to do is to address unemployment. 27% unemployment rate is uh, too high and unacceptable. We need to grow the economy on a sustainable basis in order to address unemployment and ensure that we, we, we attract uh, significant investments to, to continue rising, to improve our skills base, to address our human capital investments and ensure that the country um, in, in all aspects becomes, um, uh, 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 it grows at the level like all other countries of, 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 of the same size. All right, we leave it there for this morning, Minister. Thank you very, very much for talking to us here on the program. Our Finance Minister, Malusi Gagaba, talking to us about the big story today, of course, which is uh, a major one we'll be following, the launch of the African Regional Centre of the New Development Bank, which will be officiated by our President Jacob Zuma, together with NDB President Mr. Kundapar Vaman Kamath. And uh, this will be covered throughout the day by the different SABC platforms to establish regional offices that would perform the important important function of identifying and preparing proposals for viable projects that the bank could fund in the respective regions. It's the first of its kind and it's setting up here in Johannesburg, South Africa.